Hi, welcome to this chapter. In this chapter, we are going to start with our coding. So in our previous chapter, we created this folder structure. And in this one, we are going to add uh, certain files and we will start with the coding. So let's get started. We are going to start first with the resource folder. Here we need to create two files, testdator.csv and the other one is config.properties. So let's get started with it. We minimize the this and we can go to the resource folder, right click on it and then add a new file and we can add file name as config.properties. So we are going to add this file. You can see that this file got added and here we are going to add the one constant which is base URL, which we are going to use. And in this complete uh, tutorial, we are going to use in this complete tutorial, we are going to use uh, the APIs which are hosted at this URL. So this HTTPS request uh, request.in, this is going to be our uh, base URL. So we can add this and at this point of time, we this much is good enough. And now after this, we can move on to the next thing, uh, which we are going to add inside our constant folder. We need to add a file endpoints.java. So uh, we go here and right click on this and create a new Java class and we can add the file name endpoints.java. And you can see that a new class is created. Here, what we need to do, this file is going to contain all of the endpoints of all of the APIs that we are going to automate. For example, if I take an example of this, so for example, I'm going to start with this API, get single user. So if I click on it, so uh, you can see that this is the URL, basically. This is the API URL or API endpoint. And this is the base URL, request routine, and this is the API endpoint. So we are going to add all of the endpoints of APIs here. So how I am going to, since it is, uh, uh, again, since this is a constant thing, so I am going to make it as public static final. And it is my get underscore user. So you can see that uh, inside this, this API is about getting single user. So I am naming the same get user. And inside this, I can pass the, sorry, uh, Inside this, we need to pass this one, this path, basically, this path. Slash API slash users. Slash API slash users and two. Since this is a uh, two is going to be passed as dynamically. So here, what we can do is we can uh, pass it something like this way. Public static final. Now we have added this uh, public static final string get user, and with this, this is the endpoint of my the first API which we are going to automate which is this one. If I show it in you in this postman, I go to this URL and I click on send, I can get the response. And we are going to uh, automate very first this API. So for this, I have added its endpoint here. Now, after adding the endpoint for this one, now what we are going to do is we are going to go to the postman and uh, we need to create the model file or the POSO class for it. So here we are going to create a POSO file. So what we are going to create here, we can create a user dot Java because we are going to get a single user. So uh, here it is. Now this is my user. Now what we are going to do is uh, once we get this and since these POSO classes are also used by the developer. So there are two ways, one way is what we can say do is we can get these POSO file from the developers. And if that is not feasible for you, uh, then what we can do is uh, we can hit the request in using the postman uh, for a particular API, get the response. Once we get the response, what we can do is we can uh, control A, control C, copy this. And there is one website with name as uh, 
JSON to POSO. So what we are basically trying to do is uh, we have received response into the form of JSON, but we want to convert this JSON into a POSO class. So uh, because creating, uh, converting the JSON into POSO have its own benefit, it will help us in long term and in terms of uh, maintaining the code and it is really helpful uh, because once we receive the response in form of object, we code very easily. We can uh, access the attributes and methods inside it. Otherwise, uh, what we need to do every time, we need to kind of pass the JSON every time. So, which is not a very healthy practice. So, for this, what we are going to do is we, we copy the uh, response of this, whatever response we have received this, and it is very easy. So uh, copy this and select this and here we paste this and here we need to give the package name. Package name here in our case is main.model. So what we can do is here is our main.model and uh, this is the class name. And so what we need to do is uh, source type we need to select JSON and we are using Jackson 2 dot X and if I show it to you in our pom.xml you can see that jackson should be here 2.14 so it is uh, we are using jackson 2.x and uh, rest all is fine and when we scroll down we just need to click on this preview what it will do it will create the respective poso files so uh, you can see that here one file is created main model dot data dot server the second POSO file created is main model dot support dot Java, and the third uh, POSO file created is main dot model dot user. Now you would be wondering that we want to create only user POSO file. How these other two files are got created? So. Of course, we want to create user file. If you take a look at this response very closely, so you can see that. Uh, let me just expand this, and so that you can get. Uh, so if you see that here, if I uh, kind of collapse this response, so whatever response I have received is uh, of a user. So whatever inside this is uh, a user. So here you can see that one is data object and another one is support object. So what this, this website or this have done, this have created uh, one data class. You can see one data class and one support class, here it is. And these both are being used into uh, our user class. So uh, while creating the user class, uh, user class, it checked that there, there are two new objects which need to be created. So it created uh, POSO classes for those objects as well. So what we need to do is we need to just copy this. Uh, we need to copy this since this is a user well, we need to copy this, copy here and come to our code and here is the, our code and we need to just paste this. So once I paste this, now you can see that it is uh, showing me some errors because it is saying that it cannot find the data, uh, cannot resolve simple data because uh, our user class is using data as well as uh, support class or their object as well. So what we need to do, we need to again create two more uh, POSO classes. One is our data dot Java. The other one is our support. And the same way we are what we are going to do is support dot Java. The, the same way what we are going to do is we are just going to uh, copy and paste the content of those data and support files from here. So let us first copy the content of data.java. So let me copy this. So I have copied my data.java and what I need to do is I go here and I select and I paste here. So now you can see that whatever uh, has been there, now data has come. And the same way I am going to copy the support file as well. So support code can be copied from here and we will scroll down. And I'm going to help you take a look at this. Uh, now, all things are ready. Now, if we go to the user file, all of the errors are gone. So you can see that uh, 
you can see that uh, we can just for this point of time you can see that this is my class user which gen which have this data type so and this data is this data is this class so it is using an uh, attribute or the property of this data class so or you can say that uh, uh, this data uh, this is an uh, this is a, a variable of this data type and the same way it uses the support so uh, what actually happened behind the curtain is since it is using these two so it have created these files as well support and data and every pojo class have uh, nothing just attribute so here you can see that properties or attribute whatever you can say these are the two properties and getter and setter method for those properties get data set data get support set support and the same way data is going to be have uh, this one id email whatever these uh, so you can see that um, these are inside these properties are inside data and if i show you the response as well inside data if i expand we have one id email first name last name avatar so all these are present id email first name last name avatar so basically uh, and the same way if i expand the support object so this is this represents an object so this represents an object uh, this is an object support is an object and it is this is its value inside the response so this support object has two variables or the two attributes or the two properties you can say url and text the same way if i go here you will see that only two things will be there two variables will be there you can see that url and text and uh, getter and setter for these uh, these respective properties so this is how we can create the uh, model files and that's all for uh, this tutorial in next tutorial we will uh, add code for more uh, modules so see you in the next chapter